Hi folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. When Toyota fully redesigned this 2022 Tundra, they took a chance by fully eliminating the V8 and going twin turbo V6 only. Now we've heard from a lot of people that this was a mistake and that is what we are gonna look to answer today. So we've brought along this, the 2022 Ram 1500 fit with the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 and we're gonna compare them. In this video, we'll look at the specs, we'll look at the features and then we're gonna go for a long drive to find out is the fuel economy of this turbo V6 really that much better than that V8. Let's start by comparing powertrains. So here in the Ram 1500, we have a 5.7 liter Hemi V8 fit with the 48 volt mild hybrid e-torque system. Total output over here, you're talking about 395 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque, and that is sent through an eight-speed automatic. Now over here on the Tundra, we have a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. Now what's interesting is it's a little bit down on horsepower to the Ram. This Tundra makes 389 horsepower, but it makes a lot more torque, 479 pound-feet here in the Toyota, and it is sent through two more gears. This uses a 10-speed automatic. Now let's look at the trucks we have here today, and I'll start by going over some of the discrepancies in the comparison. So first of all, this is a Tundra double cab with the long bed, and that Ram is a crew cab with the short bed, so I realize we can't really compare the back seats, and we just won't. Um, this Tundra is based on an SR5, which is almost a basic truck. That Ram is a 1500 Sport, which is about three trim levels up the trim walk. So the Ram has a lot more content and consequently, it's a lot more expensive. That 1500 is $89,000 Canadian, where the Tundra here is just $56,000. So yes, this is a much more affordable truck. And now you might be saying, well, why are you comparing them? Well. A, we don't always get to choose the exact vehicles we want, we just take what we can get. But B, that's why I really wanna focus in on the powertrains to talk about this twin turbo V6 versus that Hemi V8. Cause this of course is gonna be the same powertrain in every other Tundra. So no, we're not gonna dig into the interior and the back seat space. We're really gonna focus on that powertrain. But there is one other really nice similarity here, and that is the fact that these are both appearance packages. Here on the Tundra, when you go for the TRD Sport, you're getting this monochromatic look, you're getting those 20 inch blacked out wheels, a unique grille up front, and then a whole bunch of other things that just adds content to the truck. Things like the active grille shutters up there, a unique steering wheel, dual zone climate control. But my big question for you guys, the audience is, do you really think this Tundra is still bad looking? Or do you think it's good looking by now? Has it grown on you? When it first launched, everyone said it was terrible looking, but to my eyeballs, it's really grown on me. I think it's a sharp looking truck. And like I mentioned, this is the 1500 Sport. Now, 1500 Sport is actually a Canadian specific model. You can basically build this truck in the States by checking the right option boxes. But this exact truck is a Canada only truck. Plus it has the GT package and both of those things come together to really make this Ram look good. It's got the monochromatic styling too, the matched mirror caps and door handles, a set of 22 inch black wheels. Those things are monsters. You're getting the black accents on this unique hood. And then of course, also a unique grill up front to really complete the look. And hey, I really appreciate this Toyota and Ram. They even match the colors for us, red trucks with black accents. And now finally, I got to throw it out to you guys. Which one of these two trucks do you think looks better? Let's talk towing and payload. And these two trucks really illustrate something that we talk about a lot, which is that there's a misconception that when you spend more money and get a higher trim truck, you're gonna get more payload. You're gonna get the capability to carry more stuff. And that is simply not true. Over here in this Tundra, which is an SR5, we have 1500 pounds of payload. On the flip side, over here in the Ram, where we have air suspension and Ram boxes and a big sunroof up there and 
steps that are automatically retractable, all of that stuff adds weight. And the payload on this truck is only just over 1,100 pounds. And that's basically where that 400 pounds lives. It's all the features you're getting over here that you're not getting over here. So it's always a question you have to ask yourself. Do you want more features or do you want to be able to carry more stuff? And then when it comes to towing, this works out great. These trucks tow the exact same amount, 11,200 pounds. Hi guys, so we're here at the gas station right now. We're gonna fill up both the Ram and the Tundra right full. We're gonna start our fuel economy run right now and we're gonna end at a fuel station, fill them back up and tell you exactly how much they use to do an identical loop today. Alrighty, trip reset, both trucks run at the same time. Let's okay. go. Now I'm here in the Tundra, we just started her up. So we're gonna zero out the total average. And then we'll also reset trip A. Boom, ready to rock. Okay folks, now Matthew and I are out here doing our fuel economy run. And right off the bat, we're about to merge onto the highway. So I wanna talk about the power, Matt, because of course, Toyota made that V6 to replace a V8. Let's see if it does. There's no doubt, uh, you know, I, we've both driven both trucks now. The first thing that jumps out at you in the Ram is just the way it sounds. Um, with the GT package, I do have a sport exhaust here, and dang, this V8 sounds so good. This, uh, the V6 over here in the Tundra, it sounds nice when you get it into that 4,000 plus range, but I mean, in those lower ranges, I think I heard your exhaust note over mine, so definitely a win for the Ram. Yeah, and I think obviously you're going to expect that. But now let's talk about the power because in that department, you know, the Tundra has a couple fewer horsepower but way more torque. And in the real world, I felt like they're really similar. They both jump up to speed. Um, the power delivery is a little different. It's the typical V8 is more linear power, more predictable power. The Tundra takes a beat to get those turbos really spooled and then it takes off. But when the power hits on both of them, I, I felt like they're pretty, pretty similar. What do you think? I, I felt the exact same thing. Um, yeah, the little bit of turbo lag, there wasn't much. And I mean, I guess I had a rolling start there, so there wasn't much from stop to start to really feel Fair. it. But overall, they just both grab and go. I have no complaints. Yeah, and that's a big deal because again, Toyota designed that engine to replace the V8. They wanted you to drive it and think, whoa, this is just as good as the old 5.7 was. And in the power department, I do think they're there. But then we have to talk about the next big you know, piece of the puzzle here, which is fuel economy. And I was actually kind of surprised to see these trucks have the same rating. Between these two trucks, you're gonna get similar power, more torque out of the Toyota, and then the same fuel economy, at least on paper. Now that's why we are doing what we are doing today, because I wanna see out here in the real world how they stack up. Uh, one thing I wanna mention right now, Matt, while I'm thinking about it, the one discrepancy I can really see here, the Tundra has winter tires on it and the Ram does not. So that's kind of a knock against the Tundra because winter tires will sometimes, you know, be one mile per gallon worse than the summers were. However, you know, we're still doing the same route, same conditions. Matthew and I are gonna switch trucks as well to make sure that we get both driving styles in. And I'm super curious to see how, how this shakes out at the end of it. Yeah, really. And I mean, we went for as, as fair as possible. We started at the same time. We've been rolling the same amount of time, idling the same amount of time. And I mean, because at, at the onset of this idea, it was like, okay, it's a V6 versus V8. This is no comparison. But then when we actually broke those numbers down, it was like, we need to be very scientific in our approach today. Yeah, and, and you know what? There are two things I'm, I'm just thinking of now while we're on the highway, um, two tricks that these trucks have to help you save fuel. So the first one is auto stop start. That's more of a city system and we'll get to that once we get into the city. But then on the highway, Matt, the Tundra has an automatic spoiler that lowers down in the front end. And on the flip side, the Ram here with the air suspension actually drops down to the aerodynamic, uh, most aerodynamic height. So both of them have a couple of little fuel saving tricks too and we'll have to see how that affects things. 
We just got off the highway. We've completed the highway portion of this fuel economy challenge. We did exactly 55.4 kilometers, and we'll throw up the mile conversion here for you. So Steve, what are you running? What are you running? I gotta know, I gotta know. <laughs> well, first of all, you gotta mention too, we did switch trucks already because we wanna make sure our driving styles are consistent in both trucks. But here in the Tundra, we're at 14 and a half liters per 100 kilometers right now. What are you at? Oh, I've got the slight edge at 14.4 liters per 100 kilometers. Wow. But that's it, man. Super similar. So, so far, the EPA, we're proving them right that the, the ratings here are very similar. <laughs> I'm shocked. Honestly, I keep laughing about this Ram. If you told me that this V8 was going to do that same economy, I would have just said, oh, come on, get out of here. What are you talking about? And part of the story with the Ram is that e-torque system because the Hemi without e-torque is actually one mile per gallon worse combined and in the city. So the e-torque does make a little bit of a difference and you're feeling the biggest one right now is the stop start. It is an aggressive yeah. stop start system. It, it literally stops the engine before the wheels stop moving when you're approaching a light right as you're almost stopped. I've never felt a system do that before. I, I spent the week in this thing and it want, this truck wants to be off. It, it is, yeah. it, that system is certainly skewed to try and turn off at every possible opportunity. Now, I don't know what's going on with this Tundra, man. It's a little weird. It does have auto stop start as well, but I keep getting a message that comes up that says um, not available battery charging. So I guess the battery just doesn't have enough charge to support it. And I guess at this point I'll say it is minus six out here today Celsius. So it's pretty chilly. I don't know if it's because of the winter, it's a bad battery. I, I can't really explain it. And just a quick note on the stop start. That's what I was talking about. It says badging and I'm actually returning the Tundra right now and I just completed over a hundred kilometers on the highway there's no reason why that battery shouldn't be charged by now it's one degree Celsius so it's chilly but it's not that cold so I mean the stop start here in the Tundra and the week I've had it it hasn't worked at all because it, it says that the batteries never had enough charge I don't know if that's just a problem with this specific Tundra or every single Tundra but that was my experience in the truck this week so as we cruise along here, I think we should talk about, well, how these trucks actually drive. So I have the TRD Sport package on this Tundra, which means I do get unique shock tuning and unique suspension tuning. Um, Matt, my biggest takeaway from the Tundra, and this has been in just about every single trim that I've driven so far, it's not uncomfortable suspension and it's not stiff like the last Tundra was, but there's a weird distinction here. The word I'm using is busy. This truck has a busy suspension. I just feel everything in the road. I feel my butt sort of jiggling more than any other truck. I feel the backs of my legs moving. I just feel everything. It's a very busy suspension feeling. Um, whereas, you know, you can back me up here, that Ram just floats along, right? It's, it's definitely that. The, the seating position in the Ram, the seat itself is very comfortable. It, it's very floaty. Everything, it kind of just eats it up. You just kind of bounce and bob and bounce and bob. Um, and I would agree. I think the, the word I used when I described your, the Tundra suspension was everything translates. Everything I drove over translated into me. I, like right now on this secondary road, it's not the worst one out there, but there's some bumps. We're going over culverts. There's the odd thing here and there. The Ram is just eating it. Back there, I would be like, oh, I felt that. Oh, I felt that. Oh, I felt that. Yeah, I won't come out and say the Tundra is uncomfortable, but it, it is certainly not as smooth riding as that Ram. And I would say all of the domestic half tons, honestly. Well, you said that you've got the TRD Sport package back there. I actually have the GT package up here. So I get the unique shifter and a couple of different interior accents and trims and all of my Sport and GT badging. But I also get a 392 rear end in this thing. And the Ram does come with three options. Now, the, the GT package is exclusive with that rear end. But what have you got back there, Steve? Yeah, like you mentioned, you definitely beat me in this area because you at least have choices in the Ram. Tundra's never offered choices with its rear end axle ratio. And in this new truck, it's a 331. So that's another thing with, with a 331, I am more fuel economy focused, unlike your 392, which is more torque to the ground focused. So I should be winning in the fuel economy war based on my rear end. And that's not exactly happening, at least not yet. We'll have to see how it all boils down. 
literally right now I'm gonna roll the camera to show everybody how crazy this snow and blowing is today. It's really nice. Yeah, it, it has gotten crazier as we've been driving. So definitely, it depends how you look at it, I guess. Not the best day to get optimal fuel economy because it's really cold and the wind is holding us back. But this is real world, man. This is the kind of stuff we deal with on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, why not do it on a day like today, I guess. Well, we're almost done our loop. We're still driving through the snow, but I think we're gonna make it. And Matt might as well throw our predictions out there. Um, I think the Tundra is gonna edge the Ram, but I don't see it being by more than one liter per hundred. I think they're gonna be within one of each other. What do you think? Going into it this morning, I was gonna say the same thing, but honestly, every time we update the number in that Ram, my jaw keeps hitting the seat. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn my, my call on its ear. I think the Ram might, with that auto stop start, just edge out the Tundra. Well, we just pulled back in, we fueled back up. First, let me talk to you about the methodology. We use what I call the TFL method because I learned this at TFL. Thanks, Shout out guys. to Roman and the boys. Um, when you pull into the gas station, and we did this when we filled up too, you fill it up until it clicks once, you wait 30 seconds to allow all the gas to settle, and then you go one more time until that second click. Now, is this perfectly scientific? No, but it is our best attempt at making sure we do things the exact same. Everything's even. So we pulled in here to the parking lot. We did just a hair over 100 kilometers. 100.7 to be exact. <laughs> so uh, the first question is, Matt, what did your computer say here on the Tundra? <laughs> I'm not showing you my number yet. <laughs> so I pulled in in the Tundra, and when I pulled in and shut off at the gas pump, I my computer was saying 13.8 liters per 100 kilometers. Okay, well, when I pulled in in the Ram, 14 even so all point right. two difference edge edge toyota but always curious to see what the real world numbers say so what's your number <clears throat> so for 100.7 kilometers the tundra did 14.3 liters of consumption okay well that's very interesting because the ram's better than that according Ooh. to my receipt i did 13.68 so call it 13.7 <laughs> liters per 100 kilometers. So that's interesting and I love doing the real world yeah. math because you know the computers might be off a little bit too. Just like the real world math might be off a little bit, I think we have to take it more as a range than a definite number. So that means Matt that our big takeaway here I think has to be that the fuel economy is super similar between these two trucks and over a long period of time, I think that is going to bear out and be true. Yeah, I mean going into today I know I was thinking in that Ram with that V8, there was no way. There exactly. was no way to put up, but to put up nearly identical numbers. Yeah. Whether it be com the computer's lying or our math is terrible, I'm not sure. But either way, we're basically running the same consumption on two different size engines. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. And well, now let's cut to the conclusion and we'll tell you which one we like better. Well, folks, we have arrived at the end of this video. That old 5.7 V8 that was in the last gen Tundra, everyone knows that it was a powerful, long lasting engine, but it was thirsty. So when this new Tundra came out, we knew that Toyota would focus on fuel economy. Is it better than the old Tundra V8? Yes, it absolutely is. Sadly though, after doing our test today, we have found that it's not a heck of a lot better than the competitor's V8, which honestly, with so much time to redesign this truck, I feel like Toyota could have done even more when it comes to fuel economy. So I guess that's also to say kudos to Ram because that Hemi is not half bad. Well, folks, that's the end of this one. Now, please go below. Let me know what you think and which truck you prefer. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. All right, Matt, time for the most important test of the whole video. The donut test.